Hi guys, Dr. Mike here. I'm here today to talk about the coronavirus. Uh, specifically, I'm very concerned about the amount of bad information that's coming out about the coronavirus, uh, both on social media, from person to person on social media, and even from our federal government sometimes. So I am here to present accurate, up-to-date data and information. Um, I promise you that everything I tell you will be up-to-date as of today. And that does bring me to my next point, which is that medical knowledge is a growing and evolving thing, um, especially when we're talking about topics that are uh, new and different and we're on the cutting edge of learning about them. Um, stuff comes out every day, every week, every month that's new about this particular subject. So what I give you today may be accurate today, and I promise you it will be, but in a month or a year, it may not be accurate anymore. If new information comes to light that is critical, I will post another video to either correct myself or to update you. So with that in mind, let's talk about the coronavirus. So I have here a question from Dr. Uh, Mr. Billy Shakespeare uh, from Stratford-upon-Avon. And uh, his question is, just how contagious is the coronavirus? And that happens to be a great question, Billy, because it's the topic of today's show. So coronavirus. Um, as it turns out, doctors and scientists have a way of talking about how infectious or how contagious a communicable disease is. And we have a number that we attach to it. That number is called R0. And it's written with an R and a zero right next to it, but it's pronounced R0. And that number indicates how many people, on average, an infected person will give the infection to in a population that hasn't been vaccinated against the illness, has not ever been exposed to the illness, which is exactly what we have with COVID-19. The entire population uh, has never been exposed to this virus. It's new, it's novel, and so it will spread from person to person. If you get exposed to it, you have to get sick with it before you can create an antibody response. So that r naught value is the number we use as scientists to describe any particular infection. So having said that, let's talk about how infection passes based on the r naught. All right, so this is how r naught, the number r naught, uh, correlates with how fast an infection will spread in a community. I've given you three examples here. One with an r naught of 2, one with an r naught of 6, and one with an r naught of 16. And what that r naught of 2 means is that one person will spread it to two people, those two people will spread it to four people, those four people spread it to eight, and finally, after four generations of spreading the virus, 16 people are infected. So that's what we call an exponential spread, but it's not nearly as fast as if the R0 is 6. In that case, one person gives it to 6, gives it to 36, gives it to 216, and after four generations, 1,296 people have the virus. And then an R0 of 16, which is just a very, very high R0, at the end of four generations, 65,000 people have been infected from that single person who had the virus. So given that we have these three levels of R0 and communicability, let's give you an example of just how communicable some diseases are that you might be um, knowledgeable about. So here's a list of other illnesses and their R0. You'll notice that there's a range here. And the reason why there's a range is because uh, each of these viruses or Illnesses may have different strains, they may occur in different populations which are less dense or more dense, and different populations may take certain um, uh, steps to try to limit the infection. So all we have is the actual data, and for each of those infectious processes and exposures, the scientists will determine the r naught for that particular outbreak, and so we have a little bit of a range. So seasonal flu and COVID-19 has been compared to the seasonal flu by a lot of people has an r naught between 0.9 and 2.1 generally. An r naught that's less than 1 means that the disease will not spread, because if you get ill, you're passing it to less than one person, and so eventually that disease will just burn itself out. Um, with an r naught of 2, you can see that it's pretty communicable. It spreads pretty fast. So this was the swine flu in 2009, which was a pandemic as well, um, but the swine flu was not a novel virus. People had had swine flu in the past, and so its r naught was in the range of a normal seasonal flu virus. Ebola, which everyone's very scared about, uh, has an R-naught between 1.5 and 1.9, so not as high as you might think because you have to actually touch people in order to get Ebola. Uh, Spanish flu, and that's the comparison a lot of people are making to the current uh, COVID-19 infection, um, you know, killed tens of millions of people, had an uh, uh, R-naught between 1.4 and 2.8. Smallpox, whooping cough, polio, mumps, chickenpox, and the daddy of all communicable diseases, mumps, 
and measles. I didn't put mumps as 10 to 12, measles as 12 to 18. COVID-19, according to the most recent study from the Center for Disease Control, a 5.7. So the big difference between COVID-19 and seasonal flu is how contagious it is. Um, in fact, the mortality figures you see on your screen every night when you watch CNN are probably, uh, the mortality rate's probably not as high as it looks because those are only counting cases of people who have actually gone and got tested, which means they presented themselves to a medical facility and had the test. And then they compare how many people have died with the illness compared to that number. In fact, the, the real number of people who have been uh, infected with coronavirus, and most of them have just stayed home and quarantined themselves for 14 days and never presented to get tested, is probably at least 10 times higher. The mortality rate for uh, coronavirus is probably going to be a little bit higher than a typical flu. The thing that makes the big difference between this infection and a typical flu is the infectivity. COVID-19 is a 5.7. It spreads like this. One person can give it to six, which will eventually give to almost 1,300 people in just four generations. Now, the key to limiting any communicable outbreak is to decrease the r naught by decreasing how fast it spreads. And you can do that by socially isolating, by wearing masks, which we'll talk about in another video, um, and by making sure that if you get sick that you don't pass it on to other people. Germany currently has an r naught for, for this virus of less than one, which means that it's burning itself out because they've taken very hard steps to socially isolate themselves. And they have a population of people who follows that advice. They follow the advice of the health professionals. And they're not getting bad information from their own government. So they've managed to push their r naught down to the level where the virus will eventually go away. Ours is 5.7 because we are not doing a good job of isolating ourselves. We have large populations of people who are not wearing masks, who are going out in public, who are exposing themselves to other people and making them sick. So there's a very interesting number that comes out of this r naught. Um, eventually, what we are uh, trying to achieve is something called herd immunity. When enough people have been exposed to this virus and either had the infection or have been vaccinated, there's no one new to give it to, and the virus cannot live without a human host. And because of that, the virus will then dissipate. In order to get that herd immunity, the number of people which must be either infected or get vaccinated is a simple equation. It's 1 minus 1 over r naught. And in the case of Wuhan, if we plug in the number 5.7, 82% of the population will need to either be infected with this virus or get vaccinated before it's just going to disappear. So if the government's telling you that this virus is just going to disappear on its own, they're just misleading you. They're trying to give you false information, false hope, trying to buoy your feelings about how this is going to be probably for political purposes. We need a vaccine or we need an awful lot of people get infected with this. So in conclusion, COVID-19 is a very infective, very contagious virus, and that's why it's as bad an infection as it is. It is probably not nearly as lethal as the numbers on CNN show you. It's probably 10 times less lethal than that, because most people are not even being counted. They're sitting at home, they're having cold symptoms, and they're getting better. The people who get really sick with this are people over the age of 60, people with previous heart or lung disease, asthma, COPD, uh, people who have a compromised immune system. So either because they're undergoing treatment with chemotherapy for cancer, or they're taking medications which uh, reduce their immune system. Those people have to, we have to be very careful about. And the reason why we wear masks is not to give it to them. So I hope this was helpful to you. Um, in my next video, I'll talk about masks, how to wear them, why we wear them, and hopefully that will come out soon. Take care. Talk to you later. Bye.